In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. <clears throat> well, sisters and brothers, you can see I'm robed in white. Today <clears throat> is an optional memorial uh, celebrating Our Lady of Lords. Mary appeared in Lourdes in 1858, beginning on this date, February 11th to Bernadette Suviru. Hmm? And, I, you know, any excuse to celebrate our mother, I love it, because I think in these times we need the comfort that comes from the closeness of a good, loving mother. And another reason I'm celebrating this is because, I don't know if you know, but Lords, you know, there are some pictures you see from Lords that has crutches stacked up of people who have been healed by going into the water at Lourdes. In fact, one of our Jesuit superior generals, Pedro Arupe, he was a medical student at the time. He was among those who investigated, you know, these miracles. And before his own eyes, as a bishop passed the people with the Holy Eucharist, Somebody that was paralyzed got up, was immediately healed, and he was there as a witness. That's one of the things that moved him to join the society. So anyway, we're celebrating Our Lady, and we come to Jesus, who comes to us through her. Yes. So let's acknowledge and recognize the times we have not said yes to God, and let's ask him for his healing and mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Grant us, O merciful God, protection in our weakness, that we who keep the memorial of the Immaculate Mother of God may, with the help of her intercession, rise up from our iniquities through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So I'm just using the readings for the day. <clears throat> so a reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals, but none proved to be the suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, this one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked, yet they felt no shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. 
Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. And so Jesus went to the district of Tyre. He entered a house and wanted no one to know about it but he could not escape notice. Soon a woman whose daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him. She came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to drive the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied and said to him, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's scraps. Then he said to her, for saying this, you may go. The demon has gone out of your daughter. When the woman went home, she found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. The Gospel of the Lord. Wow, I'm, I'm just so impressed with our Lord Jesus. Uh, towards the end of that reading, he just declares the demon has gone out of her. Yeah, just the power of his word is amazing. Uh, anyway, I, I'm going to focus a little bit on the first reading. That just impressed my heart right now. So um, I'm going to focus in on the first reading, on the, our reading on Genesis. And, uh, you know, there's something I noticed. Maybe it's, I've, you know, I've overlooked it in the past, but something that I noticed. So the first thing is, we hear about being alone. Who mentioned the problem with being alone? It was God, huh? God was the one who said, it is not good that man should be alone. Everything he had done before was good, 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 good. And then suddenly, I guess he notices and he sees it is not good that man should be alone. And then he does something about it. So God notices, says something is not good here, and he does something. Starts with the animals, right? And then there's not a suitable partner, puts the man to sleep, and then God builds, this is in the narrative, right? God builds a woman. God builds a suitable partner, right? So something is wrong. He does something. Doesn't quite work out <laughs> with the animals. <laughs> so he goes about it again. Builds a woman. And then brings it to her. God brings this gift. And all of a sudden, we see a kind of awe come over the man as he realizes this incredible gift 
he has found one in whom he can be in relation. So I just noticed that. I, I never really thought about it this way, but something is not good and God acts. It's even from the beginning of Genesis, there is darkness and emptiness and God acts. God says, let there be light. And God puts creatures, right? So it's something, it's something really wonderful. And then in terms of this... Uh, a suitable partner. <laughs> you know, I don't know why my mind went to the creed. You know, sometimes when we talk about the creed, you know, and we, we talk about God, you know, we talk about God being co-equal, consubstantial of the same substance, God from God, light from light. I don't know why my mind went there when I thought of how God creates from man one who is equal, one who is of the same substance, human from human. There's something about, I never thought of it this way, but there's something about that relationship that is co-equal, same being, God from God, light from light. Hmm? Um, <clears throat> a couple of other things that came to mind, you know? In the philosophical tradition, when they talk about human beings, they always say, Aristotle, you know, we are rational animals, rational animals. But I love more of the theological sort of view that we are beings in relationship. Beings in relationship. This image of God. God is beings in relationship. The Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. And because we come from God, we are made for relationship, beings in relationship. Hmm? So <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> the other thing, I'm just mentioning a few things that came to mind. So this is kind of like a running commentary. I hope it's, I hope it's helpful. Uh, and at the end of it, it says, you know, they were naked and not ashamed. I think there is something about if we uh, if we receive what God gives, if we receive the word, you know, I talked about how God sees something is not good, and then he provides for us, and then he builds the woman. If, if we receive and hear what God says, and receive what God gives, then we will be beings in right relation. There will be this, see, it's naked, it's openness, transparency, and vulnerability. If we're able to receive the gift of the other person and stand in awe instead of name calling. <laughs> He named all the animals, right? Da, 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 da. You name, you have authority over the person. But if we stop the name calling and receive each other in awe as gift from God, then we will have this right relationship. We will have this openness. And we will have this love. Even Jesus does some name calling in the gospel, doesn't he? calls the person dog, <laughs> you know, but then he moves into offering relationship, offering the gift that he is to her. There's something about moving from just name calling. We're not just animals. We're beings in relationship. Okay, I'm taking a lot of time on this, but 
I'm just going to end with something I heard, because uh, I kept thinking about loneliness. Isn't that something that we all deal with a lot? So I listened to actually Archbishop Fulton Sheen, you know, and uh, I'm just going to share some of the thoughts he shared, as I thought it was pretty powerful for me. Um, everybody experiences loneliness. Children. You mentioned the girl with a pimple on her nose automatically feels lonely. If you're a leader, there's a certain loneliness. If you're at the bottom of the rung, you also feel lonely. Even in marriages as well, you can be alone together. And even in moments when we feel the greatest unity and we've done something beautiful, we can still feel a certain separateness and loneliness. So it's something that is part of our life in a way. And then he says, why is that? <clears throat> he just mentioned two reasons or two causes of loneliness. And one of them is the lonely themselves. And the other is the, the people who are not lonely also. What did he say in terms of the lonely themselves? Why? Because they want to be loved too much. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be loved, but an excessive desire to be loved, he says, makes us, we feel less loved. So then we become less lovable, he says, and then less capable of, of being in relationship. Hmm? So he says, when we, when we have that excessive desire, it's like a bird in a fowler's nest. We can't get out of it. Hmm? I don't know if that makes sense. Because all of a sudden, there's a certain e egotism in it. Because you're focused on yourself. Seeking yourself excessively. Right? And then he says, the other reason is, people who are not lonely, you know, they don't bring love to the folks who are lonely. They fail to bring their love to the folks who are lonely. And he says we should have a focus for our love on the unfortunate, on the poor, on the socially disinherited, on the unloved, and on the ugly. Those are the ones we should pour out our love on, you know, and listen to. So if we feel lonely, he says, care for other people. That's kind of the thing. Try to care for other people, and loneliness will go through your fingertips. He was so great the way he said it. Huh? And if you feel lonely, you know, or you're complaining that you're without shoes, there's a Chinese proverb. He says, find a man who has no feet and help them. Anyway, it's a little bit of a ranting today, but I just wanted to share all of this. I hope it blesses us and we can, we can learn from God who sees the man who is alone and acts and does something. We can learn to listen and truly love like God does. So let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, just received a call from Paulina, her brother, Salvador Garcia, died a couple of days ago. So I want to pray for the Garcia family, maybe feeling heartache at this point. So may the comfort of God be with their family and be with all who mourn at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We're still in the midst of a pandemic still in the midst of many businesses, not being able to make ends meet, families, unemployed people, people who are isolated, and all the terrible repercussions from this pandemic. So let's pray for God's healing. Let's pray for God's strength. Let's pray for a restoration of our lives, of our mental, physical health of our economy. For this we pray to the Lord. 
And now let's just take a moment of quiet to open our hearts to God. Permit the one who came and felt all of our very loneliness and abandonment to breathe on us his own victory and life. To your prayers, we want to also remember and pray for the repose of Antonio Alvir and Rosolino and Benedetto Cusimano. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. <clears throat> God of love, hear and answer us. Breathe on us the beautiful life and peace of your spirit to draw us from death and draw us from loneliness into your love and life. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, who become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it'll become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that through the intercession of blessed Mary, the mother of your son, no petition may go unanswered. No request be made in vain through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. So with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood. It's the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Hosea, Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. And so, remembering the intentions of the Mass, Antonio Alvir, Rosolino, and Benedetto Cusimano, and especially praying for uh, the repose of Salvador Garcia. Lord, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so at our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer a sign of peace. Christ, peace to all of you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. We behold the Lamb of God. We behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof.
It's such a wonderful privilege mm -hmm. to receive the Lord. <coughs> Fulton Sheen said, what does God know about loneliness? Hmm? Has, has he ever felt what it's like to sit on a cold floor or to have to escape and run away in exile? Has he felt what it's like to be betrayed and deserted by friends? Has he ever cried out, feeling abandoned and alone? He came and he is here. It's the beautiful sacrifice that we celebrate. This incarnation, this God who has tasted our own loneliness and who overcame. So take this time to open your heart to him. Ask him to share his victory his love, his life with you. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go forth to announce the good news of the Lord.